Hello again, this is the video number 4 on the robust control applied to the servo of hard disk drives. My name is Jose Alberto Luzardo. This video is for the third bullet of our agenda, the setup of our system in order to design a robust controller. To recapitulate, we are going to design the tracking controller for the HDD servo using robust control techniques. In this video, we focus on the modeling of our system and work to find a block diagram that we can use for our design and simulation. Then let's, let's proceed. Our next step is to find the mathematical model we are going to use for the design of the robust controller. We know that the VCA, the voice call actuator, is an electromechanical system. As such, it has two parts, the electrical part which is here on the left, the electrical part which is here on the left and the mechanical part which is here on the right. We are going to take a look at the electrical part first. We know that the coil is immersed in a magnetic field produced by a permanent magnet. The coil can be modeled as an inductor here and a resistor and they are both connected in series. Now we are going to consider another resistor that we are going to call sensing resistor RS is sensing because it's going to measure the current I producing a voltage uh, proportional to that current because that measurement of this current it will be used for control purposes later on. So we are going to have an extra resistor that we are going to place there on purpose for control purposes later on. It, it has to be very small in comparison with RC, so it won't affect too much the original, the original circuit. Now we know that when a current goes through the coil and the coil is in a magnetic field, then a torque is produced that acts on that coil. Now, this is going to produce a, a circular or rotational motion in the coil. Now, if we attach to that coil the arm of the hard disk drive, which is here on the right, and this R, arm has a length R and in an inertia J that we are going to place, put in here, has an inertia J, the arm itself, if it's attached properly, to the coil, the arm itself is going to move with a rotor rotational motion with certain speed, angular speed W. And it's, moved, it's going to move because of that torque, and that torque is proportional to the current. We can see here that the, the proportional constant is Kt. As the arm moves, then it's going to produce a back electromotive force that is going to be modeled in, in the circuit as a dependent vo voltage source, depending on the mechanical part, on the angular velocity W. In this case, the, con the proportional constant is Kb. So we say that the electromotive force is proportional to the ve angular velocity and the torque is proportional to I. And the constants are here Kt and Kb as we can see in these two equations. Let's clean this schematic a little bit and then we are going to find the equations that will describe our block diagram that we are going to use in the design of the robust controller. In the circuit on the left we can solve for I using the Kirchhoff's voltage law. We are interested in solving this equation for I, but let's do it in the Laplace domain. For that, let's apply the Laplace transform to this equation. Now we can isolate I on one side of the equation and simplify a little bit by introducing two new constants, K, static gain, and tau, time constant. It's not difficult to find out that the static gain is the reciprocal of the total resistance, that is RC plus RS. And the time constant 
equals the inductance LC divided by the total resistance RC plus RS. Now we have the main ingredients for our block diagram. Let's scroll down to find out. Here is the block diagram for the VCA. In black, we have all the electrical variables and transfer function. And in blue, we have all the mechanical variables and transfer function. And in red are the transformation from mechanic to electric and from electric to mechanic. We can see here the transfer function voltage to current that we found before and we are going to call that transfer function MS. As we said before, we were going to measure IS for feedback purposes. And for that reason, we place the resistor RS as a sensing device, as a measurement device to obtain a voltage, in this case VS, directly proportional to that current. That voltage VS is going to be used for control purposes since it's going to be a feedback signal. The current multiplied by KT produces the torque that moves the arm. Here the torque provided by the VCA is T and is in blue. There is also another torque which is TD and D stands for disturbance. This disturbance is known as windage and is produced by the aerodynamics that exist in the hard disk drive as the disk spins at very high RPMs. The windage torque affects the arm position. The control system must be able to reduce this disturbance considerably. HS is the transfer function equivalent to MS but on the mechanical side. It relates torque to angular velocity and we are going to describe it later on. Once we have found the angular velocity, we can use it to find the electromotive force EMF because we know the, the angular velocity times KB produces the EMF. This way we complete the block diagram of the VCA, just that we need to find HS. We are going to find now H of S. For that we apply Newton's second law for the rotational case. The net torque equals the moment of inertia or just inertia times the angular acceleration. That is the derivative of the angular velocity with respect to time. To obtain the equation on the left we have made two assumptions. We assume there is no loss of energy, there is no friction, no dissipation, no damping, etc. And second, the arm is rigid, it can't bend and it can't twist, it's not flexible at all. In this case we can draw our block diagram. We have the other, the box, and then we have our signals, the disturbance, the torque disturbance PD, the torque provided by the VCA, and our angular velocity as the output of the transfer function. Then our transfer function HS will be just simply an integrator with a gain 1 over J, where J is the inertia of the arm. But there is a problem with this model due to the assumptions above. Assumption 1 is normally accepted. We can neglect damping and any other laws and that will be accurate. Is the assumption number two which is a problem. The arm in D is flexible. It has many resonant modes and not taking them into consideration leads us to an inaccurate model. To take all the resonant modes to model the arm will lead to a very complex model. A trade-off is made and only the four first modes are considered and the rest at very high frequency is neglected. A final touch is needed in this block diagram with a plus here and another plus over here. Let's scroll down to see what we have over here. The model of our arm considering four resonance modes. In order to describe the model of the arm, we are going to use the superposition of modes. Assuming a linear behavior, we say that every mode acts independently from the others 
and that the final effect is the sum of all of them. This is why we see in this block diagram every single mode referred as a transfer function Ri, where I can be 1, 2, 3 or 4 separated from the others. The net torque that acts upon the arm is distributed to each mode to excite them and then to produce the corresponding angular acceleration as we can ob observe here. Every transfer function Ri is modeled with a second order transfer function whose numerator is a first order polynomial. We need more space, let's scroll down. Here Z is the damping of the mode I, usually a small value close to zero and omega n is the natural frequency or resonant frequency of the mode i since zeta is small. All the parameters that characterize each mode are found experimentally and they do have a tolerance and a margin of error. Well, this is all what we needed to find our mathematical model and block diagram of our VCA, voice coil actuator. Finally, we have found the mechanical transfer function HS. We are taking a look now at the final block diagram that we are going to use to design our controller. I am encircling now the block diagram of the VCA that we found before. Now we need to add the other blocks we need to complete our entire control system. First notice that we are not interested in W since we are trying to do a position control. Then we have the integrator to find our angular position. From the angular position, we can find the linear position, which is what we really want. And for that, we multiply by the length of the arm, the radius, and then we, we will obtain the linear position. The linear position has length unit, international unit, meter. Then we need to transform this meter in tracks, and for that, we multiply by tracks per meter, which is a an equivalent amount to the tracks per inch and then we obtain tracks and here we have something very critical and that we haven't mentioned yet the run out disturbance the run out is a persistent and always present disturbance as the windage because of tolerance in the equipment used to write the servo patterns the tracks where they are written are not perfectly circular they deviate from the ideal circle and this deviation is a repeatable error whose periodicity is related to the speed of the disk. KY is the gain of the position error signal that we discussed before and is valid only around the center of the track. Y is our output and is the variable we desire to control. In this case, is the position error signal around the center of the track. YR is our reference and is equal to zero. Because we are doing regulation, we want the output Y to be around zero. And here we have the object of our design, the controller KC, that we are going to design using the robust control toolbox of MATLAB. We have included an extra disturbance or perturbation called D. This disturbance is an electrical disturbance in nature and may not be relevant since its presence it will imply the existence of a voltage not accounted for in the electronics. We put this disturbance for the sake of completeness. The last block is the power amplifier. The power amplifier is a very important piece in this block diagram in this control system because it will provide the necessary current to move the arm as fast and as efficient as possible. The power amplifier is linear within a voltage range. Beyond that range it saturates. It has a maximum and minimum outputs known as saturation values. 
Now we can see the use of our resistor RS, our sensing resistor, which is going to measure the current and produce a voltage proportional to that current and this voltage is going to be fed back to the power amplifier. This feedback will limit the excessive current, protect the power amplifier and the VCA and provide more stability. In this block diagram, we have not considered the measurement noise as a disturbance. This is because we expect the bandwidth of the control system to be small enough to reduce this noise and yet be large enough to provide the short time response expected in hard disk drives. Now that we have the description of our mathematical model and block diagram for our control system, we need numerical values. We are going to base our analysis on the paper shown in the picture. We are going to take all the numerical values from this paper and use them to synthesize our controllers using the robust control toolbox of MATLAB. All the parameters have tolerances and we are going to take most of them into account for our design.